Let's get it on. Let's get it on. How's it going, Jubanger? Yeah, it's good. How are you? I am. I'm great. I'm great. As, good. Uh, what's this? What's this massage you t- you're about to tell me about? I was like, nope, save it. Tell me about the, po- me the podcast. Save it. Save it for the recording. Um, so I, this is all linked to, uh, my Invisalign actually, but I, I, I've been having really, really bad headaches recently, right at the back of my skull where, um, some muscles called the occipital muscles are, and it's all just been really, really tight. And I was like, it was just getting to the point where I thought I need to get a massage or something. Um, and I thought there's no way that I'm going to be able to get in touch with someone and get them to, or they'll have an appointment for me within the next day. So I suddenly remembered there's like a Thai massage place uh, near where I live, a couple of, well, about 20 minutes down the road from where I live. And I was like, I'll just ring them up and see if they can do like a head, neck, shoulder massage. And lo and behold, they could. And, uh, and I was like, oh, brilliant, Thai massage, great. I haven't had one of those for years, had forgotten what it was like and um and got there and uh like she started and and uh, and she started off on my feet and I was like mm, okay I've forgotten about all this and and I don't know if you know much about Thai massage but they're very kind of they get on you and they sit on you and they walk their hands mm. up and 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 I'd forgotten all this and uh right. she started off on my feet my feet and I was like this is nice and then she started to walk up my legs onto my back, and I was like, "Oh no!" And uh, and then she. You should be used to that with your cats. <laughs> Not like this. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and she started going in, and like, and then she just started going into my glute, and she was like, very very tight, and I was like, hmm. "Yes." Very, very tight, and 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 you know, you know when someone's going in so, and, and you, I just started to jerk away, and I was like, oh, just and uh, yeah, and I just kept jolting. She started going up my back, and and the thing with Thai massage, and I remember this in Thailand, is there's there's no intake, there's no oh how are you? Have you got any conditions or injuries that I need to be mindful of? It's just bam in, and you know, just like straight into the massage. And as she was massaging up my spine, I was like, oh, and she was just like, and she said something like, I can't get in. And and I was like, yeah, I know, because I'm not used to you. And and this thought came to me. And I think it was something that you said before about what's the best thing for a human being, another human being, another person's nervous system. What's the worst thing for a human being, another human being's nervous system? And I was just like, it suddenly occurred to me that like, no one's really massaged me in the last two years or however long. And this person's just come in with their nervous system and is trying to get into my muscles. And, and I'm like, no, get off of me. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, and then I just started to assess what she was trying to do. And I was like, no, no, my multifidus muscles, which are the spinal muscles at the, the lower portion of my spine, are just a gripping on for dear life. Because I'm like, I just, just you, you can't get in, and uh, and I was just trying to assess what she was trying to do, and eventually my body started to calm down and and relax into it, but then she got into my head and got into all the muscles around uh, the base of my skull, and it was like she was twanging guitar strings. I swear, <laughs> it was so so unbelievably tight and so rigid and just made of nylon up there yeah it was just it was insane and I was like god I really am like a washboard aren't I and uh and then eventually everything just started to calm down and feel a bit better but today I'm mega achy I mean everything around my skull I mean you know it's like having a workout isn't it the muscles have been pummeled and um and I do feel better and I feel a lot looser. But the whole thing with the Invisalign is that it's actually changing the shape of my jaw and um, it's spacing out my teeth and widening out my jaw. And that in itself is creating headaches because it's changing the structure and the anatomy around my jaw and up into my skull. Um, And what's really interesting is that, I don't know if the listeners know this, but um, sorry, I'm just going to put my phone down there, is that, if you feel where your tongue is within your mouth, within your jaw, 
and it feels like there's not enough room for your tongue, uh, and which mine wasn't before, it often indicates that your jaw is caving in or it's, it's narrowing for whatever reason, and we can talk about that. Um, and over the last, what is it, four months now I've had Invisalign, uh, my tongue has now got more room in, it, in, in my jaw and, mm. and that's starting to feel a lot better. You can tell if your tongue hasn't got enough room in your mouth because if you stick it out, it'll be scalloped from the teeth. So mm. that's something to kind of assess whether someone's jaw is, is narrowing and they've got like teeth that are twisting in and things like that. So because everything's spacing out, it's just causing a few headaches, so I definitely need to start releasing uh, my my neck out a little bit more. But yeah, mm. it was definitely an ordeal that uh, massage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's uh, interesting. So you started like you mostly started experiencing those headaches since the Invisalign yeah. started to really work. It's magic. Absolutely, um, especially in the last uh, few weeks, actually, because some of my teeth are starting to twist and space and align and in order for them to do that the rest of the teeth have to space back so what you're starting to feel is like a stretch through the jaw and that's then having an effect up into the muscles that go into the back of the skull um and it's incredibly painful uh well i'm finding it painful and i think because my teeth are doing it quite quickly my dentist said that it's happening quite quickly i think that's why i'm feeling that discomfort um, but what's fascinating is that from going from my tongue not being spaced in my mouth, it's actually properly placed now. And so in terms of breathing, when you can place your tongue at the roof of your mouth and breathe through your nose, you're creating better breathing mechanics and just better lung health as well, which is why I did the Invisalign in the first place. So really fascinating. But it's, it's, a, it's quite a grueling process, I have to say. Yeah, because it can take some time and it's... Yeah, if you're changing your structure, it's actually going to cause some discomfort like you're experiencing, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, so anyone that is thinking about getting Invisalign to straighten their teeth, know that it is going to space your jaw out as well and that you could encounter headaches. It's all worth it, and I know in time, but if you're changing a structural facial position, that is going to have a knock-on effect up into the skull and down into the neck and down into the shoulders as well. You're changing your the, yeah. the way you're breathing, so... It's, it's going to have a knock on trickle down effect through the body. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just a couple of things there shows the interconnectedness of everything as well. You just change one thing, it's going to change other things. And then uh, the second thing there is um, changing your breathing so that when you are able to place your tongue in the right place in your mouth and you're mm -hmm. able to nasal breathe more, you're actually going to activate your core musculature better as well. So. Breathing better is going to give you stronger core. Like, huh? Oh, that and that, yeah, yeah, and that is something that I've been teaching brand new people a lot recently and trying to simplify that down to a way to explain it to people is, is actually quite difficult. You know, it's like you yeah. almost have to explain it differently every single time that you're explaining it, that breathing and breathing in a certain way is going to have an effect on your spine, your spinal stability and your core stability. And that's going to have a trickle down effect into how you walk, you know? Mm -hmm. And then when you try and explain it like that, it's like, what? So, yeah. What are you smoking? Yeah. What are you on? Um, yeah. It's going to change your biomechanics. And that's a yeah. crazy thought, I think. But it's, mm. it, it's totally the way it is. Better breathing equals better movement. Exactly. Well, let's make this clip for those people. You know, let's make this part of the podcast for those people who need to have an understanding of how and why it's making a, making a difference, like yeah. biomechanically, but um, for your function, for your breathing, for your mm. function, for um, uh, yeah, and for your efficiency of movement and feeling better and stronger in your body. Yeah. And um, and yeah, funny enough, I went through it with my, one of my clients this week as well, um, talking about um, like you know constant forward head posture mm. from sitting at a desk is like okay there's a lot of good work that's been going on um but now the thing we want to address is also really honing in on how to uh change the change that head posture by ch uh, changing um changing the function of some of the musculature around the neck and uh, crucially the tongue is massively involved in this as well mm. 
And um, what's interesting is um, how the tongue can actually affect the rest of the body, even all the way down to the soles of your feet. You know, so you hear that and you're thinking, how the hell could it possibly do that? But if we think, uh, we can break down the body in lots of different ways, but one of the uh, one of the ways that you can look at how it functions is through the lens of these like myofascial trains, um, which is you know, popularized by um, a fellow called Tom Myers and these anatomy trains. But essentially everything in our system, every tissue in our system is covered by fascia, which if you want to be really crude about it, is like cling film or mm. for those listening in North America, saran wrap. And uh, it's like it just it, it hugs all of the all of the tissues in our body. And what's interesting is is it's not it's not necessarily like we do, we differentiate and demarcate if different areas of the body to make it easy for us to study things in isolation. Mm. But if you look at like when you see a dissection, you see its um, its connectedness in various degrees of thickness as well as um, um, uh, what is it like the volume of it as well is basically continuous throughout the whole body. Yes. So when and then there's certain as certain aspects of your body are working in concert. Uh, uh, more regularly than others and therefore we create these so-called patterns and these movements um, which are uh, like kind of like it when, so then we break things down into movements and patterns rather than looking at things into isolations like muscles like for example when you're walking you know your right arm your left arm goes forward and your right and your right leg goes forward right yes. so that's this um, is an oblique sling that goes from that left shoulder through to the right hip goes further than that as well but we can look at it that way and we go okay this is it's not just my pec muscle it's not just my abdominal muscle it's not just my hip muscle that i'm thinking about i'm thinking about all of these things affecting each other through that chain and then when we go mm. deeper into the body the 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 deeper layers the tongue is like this um structure which is first of all a lot longer than people think it is and then secondly it can the way you position it can influence how you're holding your posture up and if nobody mm. really understands how that can be is like just try this like you know if you're listening whether you're watching it doesn't matter is like if you get like you know the, the front slash middle portion of your tongue and then you jam it as hard as you can into the roof of your mouth you will feel your neck straighten up you know you'll feel your uh, neck lengthen out your head just basically rises up so that positioning of the tongue has an immediate effect on the positioning of your neck, which will change mm. the posture. And, um, and then that has that trickle down effect through the rest of the body. So if your posture is better here, it lengthens out your spine. If the spine is like lengthened out and it allows your core muscles to um, engage more efficiently with better, um, with better breathing mechanics, not just because the core is engaging more efficiently, but also because the tongue is allowing for you to breathe, uh, through your nose more efficiently, then that has, that can stream all the way down to the lowest parts of the body and, uh, like, you know, affect how your arch functions in your foot, for example. So, um, there's a, there's a funny line by uh, the neurokinetic therapy creator David Weinstock, where he calls flip flops neck fuckers, <laughs> and so it's such a it's so such crazy. a funny one. And everybody's like, "Wait, what do you mean?" It's like, yeah, it's because when you're walking in flip flops, and if you're constantly walking in flip flops, the natural mechanism right. for exactly you're just gripping your toes on the flip flop to mm. uh, ambulate. And, uh, but, and so it's the, the natural mechanism, uh, that your foot goes through isn't functioning. And, um, so because of how that happens, the chain up uh, the rest of the body is like, you know, you're gripping your toes and then you're potentially like one of the forward. things that can happen is yeah, yeah. you end up leaning forward a little bit more. It's like, it's not perceptible to you necessarily, but it will create a more of a problem with the neck. Mm -hmm. So that's how you can have that relationship with um, tongue to the rest of the body and why having like, you know, going through the work that you're going through to improve mm. the shape of your jaw so that your tongue can sit in a better place is going to have knock on effects for other aspects of your 
health and physiology and functioning. So that's how that, uh, that's one of the ways that that stuff works. And it's pretty, it's pretty freaking awesome. <laughs> it's like, when you think about it, it's just mind blowing as well. Cause it if is. you can't make those connections, if you're too used to thinking in like isolation and just thinking in, mm. um, like you know this bit does this and that bit does that it's like you're restricting your view of how things actually function so that's uh, that's a nice way of understanding or realizing that hey if i can work on this thing then it can have other other effects which are which are beneficial as well so you know having your tongue in the right place or training it to sit in a better position um can take tension off your neck. So if you're somebody who, you know, you know, you're always like kind of trying to stretch your traps out, you're always moving your head around mm. um, because of the nature of the work that you do, maybe it, because you're sitting in front of a computer and punching away all the time, or you're writing and you're always like in a awkward position, head forward, whatever. If you just start practicing that, it can just over time help to alleviate that tension that you might experience in your neck and shoulders. Um, so yeah, absolutely fascinating stuff. It really is. And also with uh, the positioning and alignment of the neck, what's also really important about that is that the nerves that innovate, so uh, make function for the diaphragm, the nerves that innovate the diaphragm, which is the main muscle involved in breathing, uh, come from the neck. So they come from uh, the vertebra or the attachments at C3, C4, C5. So if for whatever reason your neck is forward or over to one side, and the guys at ID, Immaculate Dissection, uh, describe this beautifully, but it's a bit like uh, putting your foot or stepping on a hose. So when you do that, and if you think of it like that, you're cutting off that nerve supply that actions the diaphragm. So that's also a really important reason why we should align the neck and make sure that it's in a good position. So if you think about it, when you're at your computer and you're doing work and you're starting to come forward and you've got that head forward posture or I think I was talking about it last week when um, I was getting my vaccine everyone was looking down at their phone um, that's going to change the alignment and therefore the innovation uh, to the diaphragm and that's super duper important because if that's cut off the diaphragm is going to have uh, difficulty functioning and that's going to make our breathing harder so that's an important thing to remember as well. I think also it's important to know that spacing the jaw out and placing or being able to place the tongue at the roof of the mouth actually helps with jaw alignment, but also relaxing the jaw as well. If we, I, I, I'm just trying to remember this from before, when my tongue was kind of, it wasn't able to be placed at the roof of my mouth, it was more likely sitting in the middle of my mouth and my jaw was definitely a lot tenser. So being able to relax the jaw and, and my jaw is realigning. So I think it was deviating. So shifting over to the right hand side because my whole jaw structure was, and now it's aligning more. Um, not only does that look better from a facially structural point of view, but relaxing the jaw also has a knock on effect up and down the body as well, as we well know. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, you're, do you feel different in your body just having gone through this yet or is it oh that's a really good question um at the moment i think because everything's shifting and changing all i feel is that it's it's quite intense and it's quite uncomfortable like i'm getting a lot of shoulder issues and a lot of neck issues um but what i can see is that my face is spaced better and it's almost um stopping like tension marks through my face so I've noticed that everything's spacing out through here but I feel like it's a little bit soon to tell the, mm. the, the knock-on and trickle-down effect into my body at the moment it just feels like everything's a bit niggly and a little mm. bit uncomfortable and it is and I know from before that I was tensing up through my jaw I would I would clench through my jaw to maybe, uh, maybe I was doing that because my, my spinal muscles weren't switching on as well. So I feel like now that I'm losing that, that maybe I'm getting a little bit more back pain. So it's something to address, I think. So um, yeah, everything's just shifting and changing at the moment. And I think once the actual work is done and I'm on like maintenance, which is in about four months, that's when I should probably just start to get looked at by maybe an NKT person or something like that, just to see all the, the structural changes within my body. I think everything's holding on right now. 
And uh, mm. as everything starts to change, I'll need to get that looked at. Mm. Are you taking any pictures of how your structure is changing? Like, I'm taking pictures of my out. teeth. I don't think I'd share them, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, but the dentist actually took pictures of me, my teeth um, when I first started, and now and and the change is is quite substantial. Like I had very very twisted in teeth, and from a wrestling accident, I actually knocked one of my teeth back. So now everything's starting to space out and align. Um, so it, it will be a really interesting. Uh, journey to see what it looks like after but yeah I'm definitely noticing a change within my facial shape mm. yeah it's like it. you don't want to show that those teeth off now but when it's done you're going to be beaming you're going to show the world <laughs> and what oh, they do is they like whiten your teeth at the end so it's going to mm. be proper like um, Jim Carrey yeah. <laughs> yeah awesome it's like you know it's like what you're going for is a bit of a metaphor for um like positive change as well, right? It's a bit of a struggle. It feels really uncomfortable while you're going yeah. through it. And then Such by the end struggle. result, you'll be like, oh, this is so good. It's going to be totally worth it. And it's, it's also that thing of, I'm so glad I started when I did because halfway through the journey, it's like, can you imagine if I hadn't have started and I'm halfway through and that flew by and, you know, in four months' time, they're going to be super duper straight. Yes, there's going to be maintenance. I'm still going to have to wear the aligners, but I'm going to be so glad that I started when I did. And it's a huge commitment financially and time-wise, but it's one of the best things I've ever done for yeah. for my health and just just for me, really. It's, it's mm. in a way, self-care and self-love, I think, as well, that 100%. this is something that I've always wanted to do and... Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's been a really interesting journey to see how it's going. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I think, um, yeah, totally worth it. It's kind of like, you know, that's also, that, that speaks to, if you're thinking about doing something and you're like, yeah, that would be good to do, but you keep putting it off. Don't put it off. It's like, yeah, just don't put it off because it's like, just okay, jump. Well, it's, even, yeah, even if you think, oh man, it's going to be like a two year commitment, you know. So I'm, much money. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's like, whatever, I'm 38 right now, I'll be 40 by mm. the time I get a result. It's like, yeah, but if you don't do it, you're still yes. going to be 40. Yeah, exactly. So, I, yes, but you just wouldn't have yes, done the thing. The exactly. Right? Yeah. So, go it's for it. It's so worth it. Yeah. Mm. And I think that about anything, it's like, just do it. Don't put it off. Mm. Even if it doesn't work, even if you fail, even if it takes you somewhere else whatever it is that you're looking at, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, it's like, at least you tried rather than thinking, oh, I'll do that. Oh, that's, that seems like a good idea. Um, so yeah, definitely in terms of your health and, and you know, it's, it, it, and it is, it is an aesthetic thing as well. And the reason I actually did it is because I was looking at myself on Zoom, which I, you know, I don't look at myself a lot. So to be on Zoom and to be like, why are my teeth like that? <laughs> um that's kind of what started it and uh because yeah. uh, you look at yourself for five hours a day like when we were in full-on lockdown you're looking at yourself and you're like oh my god what's wrong with my teeth <laughs> um <laughs> it's getting hypercritical it's like uh <laughs> goes back to you know episode with emily where we were just talking about body image it's just like oh my god <laughs> yeah exactly it's, like, yeah, it's, it's feeding into that again absolutely but it, it was just something that i've i think you know it's nice to have that that smile it's something that you can change and it's actually good for you you know it's it's like I've had a lot of conversations recently about things like Botox and stuff like that because I am at that sort of age and it's like and actually the dentist was like if you are getting tension she's like I do know someone that can put Botox into your jaw and I was just like just kill my face I don't Thank I you. don't think so <laughs> it's like and, you know, but I just and it's something that I, I would like to have a conversation with the guys at ID at some point, just because there's been a few studies recently about Botox for mental health and how like just stopping those frown lines can be good for mental health. But I don't think there's much scientific study behind that. So it's just I was like, that's a no for me. Do you know yeah. the details of that? Like, no, I don't. Yeah, I, I, it was just something that I briefly saw an article on, and I, I didn't, I didn't look into it. But it's can Botox assist in mental health and depression because it's uplifting your face? I don't know. I don't think there's any science in that, but it'd be interesting to have a conversation with an anatomist about that. Do you know what I mean? Like, because you're yeah. like that. <laughs> That's kind of making me laugh 
to like you know this like trying to put a positive spin on it i know way possible. i know um i mean like whatever people you want to do botox do your thing but just remember that it's a toxin that's going into your freaking face exactly and um, i'm just so so um yeah so be careful what you wish for with that kind of thing I... <laughs> help it i don't know i don't know what mechanism they're talking about if it's just purely the aesthetic side of things if it's just the aesthetic side of things then i mean if that's never going to solve your problem that's never exactly. going to solve your problem if it's exactly. if we're talking about it from an aesthetic point of view again i don't know what the details of it were but if one of the assumptions is like, you know, you're improving somebody's aesthetics and therefore it's going to help with mental health and depression. It's like, well, that's, that's not the source of your problem. I don't think it's that. I actually think <laughs> it's a muscular, they're looking at it from a muscular point of view and that right. if you're frowning all the time and you're like that, and then you take that away, that that's going to uplift you in some way. I truly mm -hmm. don't think there's enough science behind that. Do you know what I mean? If you're, but then for whatever reason, what mental health situation is going on and you feel you've got that, feeling then i don't know i don't know there are other yeah, ways to okay. uplift yourself there is um i've read some stuff about that side of things uh where it might mm. well yeah uh, where it might make a where it might make a difference so for example as we know like emotions aren't just something that we just it, it's just there's like a it's like a one center in the brain for it and then it just kicks in it's like it's yeah. dependent it's on both. so many yeah. different things it's yeah. going to depend on your environment it's going to depend on your disposition it's going to depend on so all these incoming factors and um it's also going to depend on what's going on inside your body and then you know you will uh, feel something and then there's and actually the emotion itself that you experience mm. or rather the feeling you experience becomes an emotion because you start to understand what an emotion you you feel something and you try and label it essentially and that's the emotion so that emotion by being better at um by being better at pinpointing what the emotion is that's information for your nervous system as well so then it has a better idea of what to do with that information so you're you're better off now if i'm constantly frowning all the time mm -hmm. um there is input going into my nervous system yes based on how the muscle structure is shaping um i'm kind of speculating here but um, mm. i'm 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 learning i'm, I'm making the I'm making the inference based on what i've learned around uh, the yeah. neuroscience of it all and uh, i wouldn't think it's outlandish however whether it's tested i don't know but um but yeah but part of the thing is um yeah, your, your nervous system will be taking input in from the muscles, the way they're structured. So if I'm constantly frowning or if I've constantly got a furrowed brow, um, it's picking up information, which is subtle. And it's just saying, hey, you know, you're you're sad. So I'm going to feed that into the system and you, yeah. Um, yeah. make you a little bit more sad than you normally would be. But mm. it's just because of the, <laughs> the way your face is, uh, face is structured. And... Yeah, it's not structured, sorry, where your face is um, uh, uh, functioning and uh, yeah, if it's constantly in that frowned position, for example. But then, you know, that's not necessarily too crazy to think about if we think about how when we're posturing and if we're like, you know, huddled forward, if yes. we're bent over Here we go. in Again. this flex position, mm. it, um, it suggests to our nervous system that we are in a protective defensive mode. Yeah. And it uh, can make us feel more upset. Whereas if you open up your posture, you stand tall. Um, there's literally been studies done on this stuff where they're like, you stand tall for like, uh, like with your hands on your hips, wide posture with your feet out wide and um, you're standing up tall. It changes your physiology within like two minutes. You know? So it's like, it, it, it no, changes how you are. So yeah, it wouldn't seem like it's too crazy to think that that's possible, but um, um, <laughs> yeah, it's making me wonder if, um, with that kind of Botox research, if they're thinking people's faces are just stuck that way, so you need Botox to get it out of that way. You know? I think that's what it is, but it's also like, I think you've got to track it back to why has your face become like that in the first place? Because, hmm. you know, chicken and egg situation, thoughts create the face, the face then create the thoughts. Do you know what I mean? It's hmm. like if you're hmm. of that naturally happy disposition, 
it's going to show up in your face, right? And if, mm -hmm. if you're all constantly thinking and frowning or worrying, that's going to show up in your face as well. So I, I, I get the theory behind if you have the Botox and it alleviates that frown, then yes, potentially that is going to maybe have an effect on your emotions, on your mood. But what at what cost? At what price? Because if you're freezing muscles, you're putting venom into your skin into your system and it doesn't just stop at your skin it does fragment and come into your circulatory system your bloodstream everything what's that doing that's what i want to know and, and i know for someone like me it just i'd end up i don't know so it's a no from me but um no, harvey dent two-face <laughs> <just, laughs> no um, yeah. But I, I just, it was just a question that I would really like to ask, ask Kathy Dooley. Do you know what I mean? It's like, is there mm. science behind that? Is that just another way of getting people into buying into Botox? Because once you're bought in to that sort of stuff, that's it. You know, every three to six months, you're going to have to have it because your face is going to start to go back. So you're going to have to keep having it done. And then what does that do to your musculoskeletal system? over time because it changes people's face you can see it so hmm. and and the muscles lose their their pliability i think i don't know it might be different for the face but if you thought of injecting your bicep that's going to change the structure and how that muscle functions within the shoulder and shoulder blade system mm -hmm. and exactly so obviously the facial muscles are different, but they attach into the cranial muscles and, and and the cranial system. So again, that's going to have a have an effect, maybe on anything. So yeah, we'll do. Yeah, for sure. It's like again, we we're just talking about it. everything is interconnected. So mm. if your face starts to do this, it's like, well, what's the what's the tension that you're creating around your temporal uh, temporalis, and then in that temporalis region, <laughs> it's like. He's like, uh, he's like, you want me to do that face again? He's like, mm -hmm. like, there you go. He's like, he's yeah, never get Botox, G. Yeah. That's, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's good. Oh, like, no, no, that's going to be the unless, picture. No. Unless my face ends up like this, <laughs> then I'll have to get it. But um, no. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, as soon as you stretch it out in that way, well, it's creating tension in other parts of uh, your exactly. cranium. So, yeah, I'm curious to hear about people's experiences with it. Like, you know, does it? affect uh, not just people's experiences but there's probably some well there should be some data on it as well about um, yeah, sure. how it affects your propensity for headaches um yeah. all that kind of stuff what does it do to your vision um yeah all, all those different kinds of things you know um yeah i think there's yeah it's just basically think twice about injecting yourself with uh with the serum, stuff that you which definitely is, know uh, yeah which is a toxin yeah which is a toxin is like, okay it's considered to be safe but um I don't know. I think there's better ways of dealing with stuff. For sure. So yeah, it was just mm. a just a, just a, a question that I would like to ask. But also mm. this concept of if you have got if you are jaw clenching and you have got tight masseter muscles, which are the muscles around here that that essentially are structured around our jaw, and you in, inject them with Botox to alleviate that jaw tension, what's that mm. going to do over time? Because those muscles are going to stop working. So what am I going to be like? Mwah, mwah, I can't. I yeah, can't exactly. chew. Do you know what I mean? Because we need those masseter muscles in order to chew for our jaw health to help create spacing within our jaw. Um, mm. So again, I was like, when my dentist said that, it was it was meant with you know a goodwill, but I was like, I'm I'm not sure about that. I'd rather mm. figure out why they're tense and and release them in another way. Yeah, completely. To work with the nervous system rather than trying to override it mm. with yeah, just just blunt uh, it, block it out, yeah. block it. It's essentially a drug, mm. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could just never eat food again. Just everything's uh, you're going back to baby baby, baby food. For sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again, don't know. I don't know exactly. Don't know. But, um, no, I know. It'll be, but I can't imagine that's uh, what freaking hell sticking Botox in your masters, no nah, man. That is the thing. off the bat. It doesn't, doesn't sound like a good idea to me. It doesn't sit well with me. No way. Um, mm. Yeah. It's an important muscle, so don't, don't, don't fuck with it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> put, that, put that on a t shirt. Right. <laughs> the masseter. Every, it's an important yeah. muscle. Yeah. 
don't fuck with it. Just don't like fuck change with it. it for it. Yeah, just change it for any muscle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Don't fuck with your muscles. Just just try and optimize them. Let's do that. Yeah. Just try and yeah, optimize exactly. your muscles. There we yeah. go. But that's cool. Though. That's um, interesting to hear about your journey so far mm. along with the Invisalign as well. Yeah. And, um, What's interesting is that I think I got it just as I started doing this podcast. So you'll probably see over the time how my teeth have changed, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like you started strength training. So we're not only going to see you like wench out the screen, but we're also going to see your jaw go poof like this. So we're just going to be like, Judy, you've been like injecting yourself with steads. Like you just got pumped like in the arms, in the shoulders, everything, <laughs> jaw as well. Like, yeah, you get that blockhead. That's like a surefire sign that somebody's uh, been been juicing. Is it, is it Quagmire from a family? What's his name? Oh, Qu Quagmire, Quagmire. 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 Yeah, yeah. Quagmire. Quagmire. He's got, he's got one of those. Giggity, giggity. <laughs> giggity, giggity, giggity. Um, I don't want one of those jaws. I just want, you know, a nice <laughs> non-aged jaw, thanks. <laughs> non-aged. You want a Benjamin Button your way through, basically. I am Benjamin ben, Benjamin Buttoning my way through life. There you go. Yeah, exactly. It's um, yeah, just get younger as you get older. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. That, I mean, like that is the ideal. It is it does feel like the older I get, there's I don't know. Maybe it's more appreciation, but I definitely I just feel I generally feel better. As I'm, as I'm getting older because uh, there's experience and I'm applying that experience and then um, to yeah, making sure I've got a better functioning body. Um, as you learn, you, yeah. you apply that. And who says that as we get older, we have to just accept that our body is the way, oh, that's just, that's just getting older. It's like, no, it doesn't yeah. have to be like that, I don't think. I, yeah. think, we can, I, I think we can feel good at any age and... I know there is more risk of becoming overweight, losing muscle mass, maybe getting uh, certain diseases and disorders, but it doesn't have to be the way. If you're mindful about your nutrition and your sleep and how you move your body, I don't think it has to be that way. So, hmm. um, yeah, I definitely feel like I'm getting younger as I get older. So it's, it's uh, yeah. as you learn more as well, I think. So, hey. yeah. Yeah. Because I think um, uh, I think in most cases, like the biggest risk factor for pretty much anything is just age, <laughs> which is yeah. um, cardiovascular disease, cancer, death. <laughs> the biggest risk factor yes. is age. Um, <laughs> and so, so it's like the more you can do to feel younger as you get older, the greater your chances of staving off these uh, of these. Um, illnesses and problems yeah. so yeah that idea of feeling younger as you get older is certainly there's a lot of there's a lot of value to it there's a lot of virtue in it um, mm. and that comes down to purely how active you are about pr uh, approach um, um, uh, getting that kind of uh, getting that kind of feeling in your life because it's not going to it's not going to be passive it's not just like you just let things happen so no. the example of you know losing muscle mass as you get older, yeah, it's a thing, but you can actually It doesn't have to it. be that way, yeah. Yeah, you can preserve most of that muscle mass by doing strength training. And this is, it's just so important. It's just like something, just as simple as like a few times a week, just throw around some weights and... Do some squats. Will, yeah, it will just, uh, it will stave off that aging. It has an anti-aging effect. Was, um, I remember seeing a while ago, it was like a cross section of muscles of uh, like a seventy plus uh, person who did no That's training. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You've seen the same thing. And the one with a triathlete as well, or something. Yeah, it's just like yeah. somebody who'd maintained, Incredible. yeah, maintained their muscle mass, and it was completely different. And like you know, the outcomes for this person in terms of like health, bone health, structure, breaking their bones, like. The older you get, the greater your risk of falls because mostly because you lose your muscle mass and your bones don't have as much protection. So, mm. um, yeah, when they showed that, there was, uh, it's, yeah, it's just wild. It's like it was basically, was, I think it was like a 75 year old. And, yeah, it uh, was. They're, they're, yeah, they had the muscle structure of like, you know, somebody who's half their age, basically. So, um, yeah, just 
doesn't matter how old you are as well, just start training if you haven't done it before. Whether you're 50, you're 60, you're 70, you're 80, just start training. It makes Garant, a huge yeah. difference. Really, really does. Um, and, and just, I think, finding something that you enjoy. It doesn't have to be go, go, go. You know, you can do weight bearing through body weight as well. And that staves off things mm. like osteoporosis. Um, mm. Or it definitely increases, uh, if you do have osteoporosis, it definitely helps improve things like that. So, it, it, you know, it, it can be anything. But it also just helps functional movement in the everyday as well. If you're strength training in whatever shape or form, it's going to help you move better during your day, whether you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 70s, whatever. Um, and I just, I just, I, you know, I, I, I always see older women who, you know, they have canes or they have maybe hip issues. And, and I just think, you know, if, if you maybe started a Pilates practice or a strength training practice, that maybe could have been staved off and mm. and I like to think that you know the people that come and see me and and myself as well that hopefully I've stood myself in good stead for as I age I will have less I don't know chance of getting those sort of things we will see but I'm doing everything I can to make sure that I age well and uh mm. it's just so important Thanks. Nutrition and um, yeah, and um, but I think yes, strength training, yes, movement, everything to do with that, but also what you eat, how you hydrate, what you drink, the thoughts you think, the how you sleep. It's it's everything that we talk about week in week out. It's the whole thing. It's like that quote that you said. It's like what people think to be health and fitness isn't. It's it's the barely scratching the surface of what health and fitness is. It's mm. it's so it's the whole shebang: mental health, movement health, you know, physical health. It, it, it encompasses it all, really. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot deeper uh, than just thinking about sorting out the physical side of things. Because mm. I mean, is it sounds wild, but there's even some evidence to suggest that if you go for a walk in nature for thirty minutes it's better for your cardiovascular health than going to the gym and yeah. going for a run. Because you're- You have to think about like, it. Well, you're, take, you're taking off so many other things. I'm talking mm. walking, not even running. Yeah. Like, you, know, you, you go like cardiovascular exercise in the gym versus actually going for a walk in the woods. You know, yeah. that has, the latter is more, uh, is, is better for your cardiovascular health. So, which is wild. Um, it's just basically suggesting to us that it's not just about getting your heart rate up. It's no. about other things. It's about being connected with nature. It's about um, uh, like, well, yeah, that's the biggest thing is like being connected with nature. But there's also like social, being social mm. is um, known to, you know, it's going to reduce your blood pressure if you have high blood pressure. It's just uh, improve, your, improve your cardiovascular health. Like, you know, living with purpose is another one. It's like, you know, what is your purpose? If you feel like your purpose is all over the shop, or rather you don't have one, um, mm. then your your health suffers as a result of that as well. Because if we're learning anything, that brain-body connection, mind-body connection, it's way stronger than anybody has ever thought it could be. Um, in our modern world, at least, uh, like the uh, realizing that it's as... Um, it's, it's just, yeah, we're just foregoing too many things by thinking of things in a very rudimentary kind of, this affects this, this, this one thing affects that thing. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's useful to know those things, but it's also useful to remember that we are human beings, which are a product of our environment and, mm. um, a product of mother nature. So maybe we should do those things, which we've always naturally done rather than, um, try and try and think we have complete control over our over ourselves in that regard it's like yeah go back to the things that we've always done which we've known work for us just and then feel yeah feel like how feel, feel yourself um change as a result feel your health improve as a result of that and like just get those get those basics right right yeah and also just going back to walking in nature um other things 
I think I think the reason it is so valuable as well is that you're using all of your senses to help navigate your environment mm. when you're out in nature. So, yes. you know, the terrain is uneven a lot of the time. If you're going out for a walk in the woodlands or whatever, you have to navigate uneven terrain. So your stability and your balance, coordination, control, and core stability, spinal stability have to come into it. You're using your visual field, your visual system, uh, in, in different ways than you would be at a gym because you're constantly refocusing, yes. going wide and going and focusing in and then going wide mm -hmm. and then focusing in to help navigate your environment as well. So that's good for your visual system, but then you're also hearing and having to listen out. But it's actually just being in nature. If you, unlike me, I listen to music, but sometimes I take my headphones out. It's actually incredibly calming to have the sound of birds, the sound of leaves, the sound of horses, wherever you are, even getting out into the park, like hearing kids play. It, it, I think it does something to our nervous system as well to just hear life. And you don't get that at a gym, you know, but yes. also circadian. So, OK, it's better to get daylight at as near to sunrise and sunset as you can. But actually just getting out in the daylight has a huge effect on the way we sleep and how our body functions. So all these things can become hugely beneficial for our health by just getting out in nature. And it doesn't have to be going right out into the middle of the country. If you've got that, great. But even going out to your nearest park, you're going to get a little bit of that. And I know it's really hard. And a lot of people are like, yeah, what about when it's raining or when it's, you know, crap weather? And I totally understand that. But do you know what? Whatever. Get a dog. Get a dog yeah. because you're going out, rain or shine. And uh, <laughs> yeah. that doggy doesn't care. So <laughs> that's, a, that's a way of getting out uh, <laughs> and getting your that. steps in. <laughs> love that. It's like, oh, you know, what if it's wet outside? It's like, get a dog. <laughs> <laughs> That'll make you get out. Yeah, it'll make get you get a dog out. or a child. But, so <laughs> Yeah. But I, I mean, like, for me, I don't, I just, I'm like, I don't, whatever. I don't care. Just. If you got to get out, you just get out. Matter. Like wear some waterproofs, even if you don't have them. Go get wet. Come back yeah. and have a shower. It's like it's fine. It's you actually know? it's it's like, it's if, almost yeah. It's it's life affirming to get into the rain and the yeah. weather sometimes. So yeah. just feel it. How epic does it feel as well? Especially if you're running through the rain, you just feel like Rocky or something, man. <laughs> I knew you put it into a film. I knew you would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred percent. It's true. You know it. Just, just, yeah. just make it, make it. Use your imagination to make that easier. But I think that half mm. the thing with getting out when the weather's crap is actually just set, getting yourself out and setting foot yeah. outside your door. Because once you're out, you're out. Mm. I remember I, I, I did a lot of running with my friend, and she was like, "I hate running in the rain," and it was particularly bad one day. And I was like, "Now we're going." And as soon mm. as we got out, I mean, it was torrential. It's fine because you're just out and you just start running and then you don't notice it. Mm. And then once you're out, you're out and then you end up doing six, seven miles and it's, it's, you're done and you feel so much better. You might be soaked to mm. the bone, but you feel so much better. And uh, that also makes you feel even better as well as like, despite like, the weather, yeah. I, 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 I did this and that's, yeah, that's amazing as well. Resilience. Like, yeah, I didn't, right? I, yeah. I didn't let anything yeah. stop me, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, mm. and I know it's hard, but half, 90% of the battle is just getting out and doing it. The rest of it is like, you'll get it. So, yeah. or get a dog. That'll get you <laughs> out. Yeah. Believe me. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's, yeah, for me, I'm like, yeah, just forget it. Just, it's just another excuse. Cause at the end of the day, if you're in the UK, like what, it's gonna be raining most of the time. So pretty much, <laughs> what? Just, doesn't just matter. Suck, suck it up, just get out there and then just yeah. go for it, you know? Yeah. Is, um, because otherwise you just like, oh, you can only be healthy for about two months of the year. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, you can only it. work on it. Fair you know, weather runner, it go doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Fair weather, that's it. Fair weather, everything's a fair weather cyclist, fair weather runner. It's just, um, yeah, but because if, if you're always, you know, if you're always just going to wait for the weather to be any good, it's just like, okay, well, it just, maybe it just doesn't mean as much, <laughs> mean enough to you to actually go and do the thing. There's, yeah. um, um, but it's there's it just feels so good to do something when it's particularly when it feels more difficult to do it Huge. so that's that's yeah. why i always say that's what i always say to my clients like look forget it 
doesn't matter. Just if it is raining, go out, go enjoy the rain. You know, we've got to change a relationship to something that's mm. happening so often in this country. I've, I mean, I've had to, because especially like my genetics dictate that I'm all about hot weather, right? It's like, I just, yeah. I just, I just love the heat. I just love Me being too. out in the sunshine. That's like default. I don't care if it's 30 degrees. Everybody's like, oh no, there's a cough. I'm like, no, 30 degrees. Too hot. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Same. So, yeah. So it's just, um, uh, so for me to appreciate the rain is like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to do this. But I just started doing it. It just felt great. So I was like, it doesn't matter. Just get some waterproofs. And if you don't have them, don't worry about getting wet. Just do your thing. If you're that pressed for time um, where it's like, okay, I don't have time to get showered up after going for a walk or something. It's like, all right, well, yeah, just do the whole waterproof thing. So yeah. Best. it's... Um, yeah, exactly. Invest in making sure that you can get this thing done. Yeah. Um, because because it's that important to do it. So yeah, forget it. Just tell rain, sleet, snow, blizzards, hurricanes, tornadoes. Oh. Tell them to suck it. Get Fine. Out. Get out. <laughs> yeah. Get out. Yeah, exactly. And and you know it is it's also that that age old thing of of making time. Because we can always find more important things to do than to move. I think. Oh, the, the weather. Quote, quote, quote unquote important. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Not necessarily There's all more, right? other stuff to do above yeah. getting out and moving, and it is it is just setting up a routine and getting out and 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 just doing it. It doesn't have to be for long. One foot in front of the other. Five minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes, whatever it is. Mm. And that's how you build a habit. And, uh, yeah, I mean, God, even as trainers, there's times when we don't want to do it, right? You know, there's yeah, times where it just can't be bothered. Mm -hmm. But you know, we know from doing this day in, day out, telling our clients day in, day out, that actually just getting out doesn't matter. If you do five minutes and you come back to go, well, I did it. You just build. You build exactly. and build. And, and then you eventually you know that you're going to do half an hour. You know that you're going to do yeah. more. and. And that's it. And okay. and you feel so much better. You sleep better. My big thing is that I always sleep better. I always have more energy for moving than when I don't. It's very easy Completely. to stagnate. You know. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Just um, yeah. Just not doing anything. It's like that. Like getting moving is taking action. Taking action reminds you that you have agency you have agency mm. you always feel better when you feel like you're in control yeah and um yeah you just hit your head hits the pillow and at night and going to sleep you just feel a bit more fulfilled because you did something difficult and you did something that's good for you and you did something yeah. that is um uh, uh especially in the face of i had all these reasons to not do this thing and i did it anyway like if we're talking about it in the context of weather shit it's like mm. just go and do the thing go for that walk enjoy enjoy the fact that it's raining because you are fulfilling the thing anyway and then um yeah and just just bask in it you know it's just like yeah. enjoy enjoy that feeling of having accomplished something Absolutely. you create resilience and then actually writing down that as a bit of gratitude then that that then amplifies that feeling i think so yeah it's, it's all important that's um that's an important thing um mm. to consider is amplifying that feeling it's mm. uh, it's because it's, it's easy to it, by human nature as well we are more focused on things that are negative than things that are positive because mm -hmm. we're wired for survival rather yeah. than anything else right so you have to amplify that um the positive stuff that happens. The good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So that you can remind, like, you just pay attention to the fact that there, like, you know, there's there's enough positivity than there uh, out there, and uh, that you've created as well, which uh, can fuel you. Whereas, you know, if we're not doing that, then we can get sucked into um, this kind of cycle of like not well, not being grateful is not a great place to live, mm. and. Um, I mean, yeah, with with that kind of with that kind of mindset, yeah, things just end up flying by. Whereas if you take a moment to appreciate, and uh, I like what you said, I like that, I like how you phrase that, amplify that feeling. When you mm -hmm. do that, it it really 
it kind of electrifies you, you know, and you're just like, oh man, that's so good. I'm supercharged to go you and do another thing. You see it in writing as well. Mm. Yeah. When you put pen to paper and you see that in writing, it almost, again, amplifies what you've done. And uh, mm -hmm. I think that's hugely important, hugely effective, especially exactly. if you are struggling or you are trying to create a change when you're like, oh shit, look at what I've done this week. Yeah. Oh, that is more than I thought. You know, I think that's a that's a hugely valuable thing to do um, yes. to write stuff down. And hey, if you don't want to put pen to paper, no worries. Just put it on your phone. It's still there, black and white, for you to see how well you're doing, the progress you're creating for yourself in your life. Um, mm. Me personally, I like to put pen to paper, even though it's phenomenally messy and I'm incredibly lazy with my writing. Um, it is yeah, well, nice that, well, that to. One time. There was that one time I asked you to send me your notes. Oh, God, you I know. And you were notes. like, what the fuck is that? I just went, oh, well, that was not, not helpful at all. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at it for five seconds. I was like, oh, okay, I, I won't ask. <laughs> no, I know. I know. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and, you know, yeah. it's, just, it, it's not that I'm bad at writing. I'm just lazy. Um, mm. And I like to yeah, write exactly. quickly because I'm trying well, to recreate typing because I type quite quickly. Yeah. Um, but it's generally but it's for you. It's not. It's not for yeah, me, it's right? Me. It's like I asked it's you out of the blue. Shockingly bad. Time, so. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, really? I don't think you're going to get anything from my writing <laughs> yeah. because only I can decipher my writing. Yeah, um, I was like, let me let me try, and then I tried, and I <laughs> failed in five seconds. Yeah, fine. <laughs> failed in five seconds. No, yeah. Gone in sixty seconds. Failed <laughs> in five seconds. <laughs> That's hilarious because as soon as you say it like that, that's exactly what I thought of was gone in sixty seconds. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Like, good old Nick Cage. Oh, he's another hero. Oh, love it. Um, oh, man. But the <laughs> physical <laughs> nature. <laughs> but going back, the physical nature of me putting pen to paper, it helps me to. I guess just uh, I've forgotten the word, but it just helps me to summarize everything that's been going on that's good and that I've done and that I've I've achieved in my week or my day and. Um, and it gives me the time to focus in and think about stuff. Otherwise, if I'm like on my phone, blah, 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 yeah, yeah. Whereas if I have to actually put pen to paper, I think about what I'm grateful for and the positives that, that have happened in my day, in my week. Um, and it helps me pull stuff out of my memory a lot more. So I think it has mm. many, many benefits and makes me a bit more yes. creative about what I'm grateful for rather than my life, food, water. Do you know what I mean? It, mm. You have to kind of hone in and make it quite specific. Ooh, so yeah, yeah. It's uh, well, it's good to be grateful for those things. Um, but hell also, yeah, it's just get specific. Sit, get specific, um, but also sit with it. You know, just let yeah. that. Fit. It's like it's nice. you don't just you don't just do it. You have to be it, right? Um, so that you actually get the benefit. You don't just. It's not like it's another thing. You just check off the list and you're done. And I've done done gratitude. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've, done, I've done gratitude. Yeah, I've done gratitude. <laughs> Clocked it, completed it, level 100 master. I've done it. He's like, no, this is not how it works. You are the master by being it. You know? I've done gratitude. You've got to yeah. say it like that as well. Cock me accent. Yeah. I've done gratitude yeah. this week. I'm all, I'm all set. Yeah, we're done. What's next? Ticked. Move. Right. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no. Embody it. Feel yeah, it, exactly. encapsulate it. It's good. That's it. Let yeah. it literally, let it like literally, but no, <laughs> let it flow through you. Get that feeling of it flowing through you. It's because um, otherwise you're just, you're not getting anything out of it. You're not getting anything out of it the Taking other way. So, yeah. Yeah. So that specificity is really helpful, but just actually, even if it is something as simple as, I am grateful for my meal today sit with that feeling. It's like, oh man, the texture of the food was amazing. I mean, I'm just so lucky to be able to cook my own food or eat, um, eat this takeaway that I really enjoy. It's like, and then you just feel so much better after. I feel good and I haven't even eaten anything. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, laughing because oh I God. know how much you love food. So it's <laughs> like, here we are again talking about food because you and me, we love food. Now we're just going to talk talking about food and brownies yeah. and burgers. So let's, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. 
I just, I mean, I, yeah, I just felt so good. I was grateful for food, which I haven't, I haven't even eaten yet, but I was just grateful for food. Always in that moment. grateful for food. Anybody like listening to the podcast, especially watching it, I think I just like closed my eyes and I just got so in the zone with it. <laughs> I'm I just laughing. Felt, yeah, yeah, I just, felt, I just felt so good, and I was like, yeah, that's an amazing feeling. I feel so good now, like, <laughs> you know. So, just, uh, just yeah, just that's it. You allow yourself to sit with it, and you picture it, and you feel it, and. Um, there you go. You got a live demonstration of it right there, man. I just feel so much better having done that for that's 30 seconds. Beautiful. There you go. We could do so, that with anything, though, and that's what gratitude yeah. should be about. Like actually yeah, sitting with the feeling, especially if you're struggling, like sitting with the feeling of how lucky am I? I've got water, electricity, whatever it is. You know, I did really well. And if you actually sit with that, that's a beautiful thing. Whatever it might be, grateful for yeah. my work. I'm grateful for mm, yes the fact that I can move my body and I'm able to move that that's always a big one with me I am grateful for my body and the fact that mm. I can move my body even though I might have an injury I am strong enough to move my body and do everything that I need to do you know 100%. that's like a huge thing isn't our body uh, isn't uh, aren't our bodies amazing you know mm. and that is I think that's a huge thing to be grateful for yeah, and I love that, especially because, like, you know, you're somebody with a spondylolisthesis. Yes. You could all, all, always be looking at it and be like, here's this back condition that holds me back. But you're like, I'm so grateful that my body can do what it's doing. Yeah. And, yeah, it's amazing. It is truly amazing. Um, Thanks. Yeah, I think to, to, to have that, to, have, to be in that headspace with it and to be in that feeling with it, like, uh, from... It's not, yeah, it's not just a headspace thing. It's like, it is, when you do it right, you feel your whole body engaging in the practice. Yeah. And by that, I mean, like, uh, you, there's this kind of energy that can emanate out of you, right? You can experience it in a certain way. Like, some people talk about it being my heart feels open. Other people talk about it, like, you know, you get butterflies in your stomach, like, mm. not in a nervous kind of way, but in this kind of, oh, wow, something just feels really pleasant here. Yeah. Um, you can just, yeah, you can just experience it in so many different ways. And, um, and that's, yeah, it's you getting your body involved. It's not just being in the right mind headspace. It's actually being in the right space, period, yeah. you know, for, you, for your whole self. So, yeah, amplify. I love that. I like how you said that. I'm going to use amplify. that over and over. Nice. Just amplify that good feeling because it's so necessary. It's super necessary. It's super necessary. Before. Yeah, and uh, it's super necessary to do because... Uh, you know, we are wired mostly for negative information. Like, you know, there's, mm. there's some stats on it where you, essentially our brain is picking up on nine bits of negative information for every one bit of positive information. Um, so that's what it's absorbing. So if you think yeah. it's outnumbered by a ratio of nine to one, it's like, well, we're going to have to do a lot of um, uh, kind of like affirmation on the positive stuff mm. to wait um, to rebalance that. Uh, to rebalance that ratio and it could just be like in that one bit of information that you take in and you're really amplifying it can then outweigh all the other negative bits of information that you're taking in so and there's and there's a reason for it it's a smart reason why we why we do that it's purely again it's like it's about our survival but safety yeah um, yeah it's about safety but let's um let's not just live in safety let's not just live in survival mode let's thrive by amplifying um amplifying the, the good stuff that happens so that it gives us more fuel to continue doing the good stuff. Mm. Isn't our brain incredible that we could pretty much evoke a feeling just through visualization, you know? Yes. And you're right, just, just toggling back. I mean, y you could like switch on the news, like look at Facebook, social media, any website, and, and it is all wired in for... Uh, it's, it's, it, a lot of it is fear-based and, you know, the worst things that can happen. And, you know, we are wired for safety and, and survival and it is important to know those things. So isn't it incredible that if you are doing things like gratitude and, and trying to attune your brain to become more positive and focus on positive things, you are, you are working against the tide. And that in itself, like if you are doing gratitude or trying to become more positive, like hats off to anyone that's doing it because to go against the grain and to become more positive with everything that's going on in our life and with everything that's thrown at us day in, day out, doom, gloom, whatever, to fight against that tide mm -hmm. takes work and is incredible. So credit to anyone 
that is trying to make a positive change in their life, trying to focus on the positives, write about them, like encapsulate it, or just visualize a better life for themselves in amongst what has been a pretty difficult year. I mean, you guys are amazing. And credit to you all for making a change within within a very difficult time frame. Bam. Sig it, sister. There you are. <laughs> Kablam. Yeah. Finger guns. <laughs> <laughs> Juju dropping the kablam. <laughs> that's, that's legit. It's true. It is. Yeah, in a way, it is going against the grain because yeah. you can just get caught up in the rigmarole of life, or you can actually take that, take that action, and keep um, keep thinking positively about uh, about stuff, being keep optimistic. Hustling. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like yeah. Essentially, it's like being optimistic is going against the grain. You know, it's like. You're rebelling. I mean, You're rebelling against it all. Being optimistic yeah. and doing self-love and self-care is, is a form of rebellion, right? Because the news would have you believe it's all awful. So it's, mm. like, a, it's like the most rebellious thing you could do is be like, yeah, mm. I'm going to be positive and do a lot of self-care and, 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 uh, and think good things and be grateful. Yeah. Yes. It's, um, it's big. I just never watch the news. I don't know what they're doing in the world. Me either. I can't. I think. Yeah. It just does my head in. And I don't know if that's, uh, again, I've, I've lost my words, but it, it, it might be a stupid thing to do. But for me, I can't have all that in my brain as well as everything else that I've got to deal with. So it would do my head in. I'm a little yeah. bit too empathic for it as well. It just, it hurts sometimes and I can't listen to it. So, mm. yeah. Yeah. It's just, um, yeah. Forget it. That's a whole different conversation. I know exactly. Story. But it is it is something that needs to be done to kind of protect yourself um, mm -hmm. from yeah that constant negativity. You know, it's just you're getting it's fed it, and yeah, it's always there. And um, and so you have to you have to, like just disconnect. I mean, it got to a mm -hmm. point where I was just saturated with it, um, and I just realized it wasn't serving me. I was like, why do I need to know all this shit? I you don't. don't. You know, what can I do about it? Nothing. Nothing. So the only thing that I can do is live my life well. And by extension, me living my life well hopefully helps other people live their life well. A little ripple effect out, you know? Yeah. And and exactly. that's all that's all we can do. Yeah. It's like, you know, if I bring the better version of me to the table, then hopefully, you know, other people are bring the better version of themselves to the table as a result of that. So that's how you know, you have your effect on the world, not like mm. watching the news and just shrinking because you're it's getting fed it. in a lot of cases, a load of bullshit. And, um, but it's designed to be negative because they know that that's how they capture attention. And it yeah. doesn't even have to be true anymore. Like there's so much shit out there where you're like, that's just not actually true. Yeah. So, right. um, yeah. you just, you get a, you get like a single side of the story and, um, context is completely stripped away. And then mm. it makes you believe that the world is a certain way. And there's like, no, actually, you're just getting a, you're just getting a perspective. That's all you're getting is. one journalist's perspective as well. One, mm. one point of view from one place. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, that's another reason. Call me ignorant, but I just, I, I just can't, I can't do it within everything else. And mm -hmm. yeah, I'm much like you. It's just, if I can ripple effect out from looking after myself and, and learning the things that we learn and bringing mm. that out into the world, then, hey, if I can get one person to breathe better and they feel better for breathing better, then my job is is, is worthwhile, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, I'm going to change track a little bit because one yeah. of the things you were talking about was uh, midweek where you mentioned something about caffeine to me, mm. coffee. Yeah. And um, this plays a bit into stuff about circadian rhythms earlier mm -hmm. and massively uh, plays into yeah a little bit it's like yeah, not massively um into circadian rhythms that you mentioned earlier we started getting happy about food so it reminded me about the caffeine conversation about coffee so um yeah you were going to say something about uh, the stimulating effect and your i don't know what your relationship was like with it but uh, yeah tell me what you were thinking on that front so i love coffee um, uh, 
yeah, I I love coffee, and it it's almost like a treat for me in ways. Um, I have it when I get up, but I also have it as a you've done all your sessions, have a coffee. Um, so I treat it like a I don't know, it's like a a, a well deserved reward. Yeah, um, it's almost a bit dopaminergic for me. It's like once you've done everything, you can have a coffee, and whether that's good, bad, or whatever, it's it's just something that I do. Um, but I made the fatal error uh, midweek of having a coffee at about five o'clock in the afternoon. And and I didn't put two and two together at first, but I had the worst night's sleep I've had in a really long time. And I not only and I thought it was for other factors, like we've been talking about the podcast and there was loads of positive things. I thought I was really hyped up about that and other stuff was happening at work. And I thought I was really hyped up about that. And I was like, why can't I sleep? It clearly is that. And I hadn't put two and two together until the next day. I I naturally felt as I as I went into the evening, I hadn't had any caffeine, I naturally felt sleepier. And suddenly I was like, ah, you messed up yesterday. You messed up yeah. all those neurochemicals, all those chemicals in the body that help you start to transition and, and slow down into that sleep stage. You basically blocked them out by having a coffee and then you couldn't sleep. And it was, mm. it was, it was huge. And it just goes to show if you affect how your body starts to transition down into sleep stage, it, you know, it has a huge effect. And if you're doing that day in, day out, that can have a detrimental effect on you, your sleep, your health going forward. Mm. So it was just something I wanted to talk about because it's the, the chemicals uh, adenosine, isn't it? That helps you body. transition yeah, down into sleep. So that naturally starts to increase during the day and heightens and peaks probably about 7 p.m., I think, the chemical adenosine, which is the chemical that starts to help us move into and transition to, into sleep. So when you start to block it with things like caffeine, that can start to have an effect on your sleep cycle and your circadian rhythm. And so it was just it was just something to note that I was like, I completely messed it up and uh, noted I'm not going to do that again. Yeah. And uh, what, that release of it is dependent on your own cycle, like your sleep, wake sleep cycle that you're in. So you're okay, Ian, yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, uh, with, yeah, I mean, with caffeine, it's kind of, it's also dependent, like, it's so well researched because it's just like... Uh, but also there's conflicting research on it because in the in in, the, in our western civilization we're just in love with coffee you know it's like a, a stimulate stimu it's a stimulant that we can we've we've normalized we've uh, uh, in our in our culture for us to be taking continuously and um, celebrate uh, the the benefits uh, of taking of having it um, in 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 a way which is like you know if you replaced it with the word cocaine, everybody be like, you're, you're fucking mental, <laughs> you know, but, um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Correct. what I mean by that is like, you know, it's like, oh no, I can't wake up in the morning without my coffee, you know, that kind of thing. So oh, I can't get my projects done without coffee. It's like, yeah. oh, th there's a problem here, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, potentially is like a problem yeah. here, but, um, uh, but essentially is like, uh, with with caffeine it's going to depend on your own personal level of um uh, adaptation to it as well so if you're yeah. caffeine adapted then you can uh, then you can just handle more of it than somebody who isn't there is a genetic component to it as well like uh where you can have more sensitivity to it or less sensitivity to it so the more sensitive you are you're probably going to get done after one or two shots of coffee but if you're yes. less sensitive to it you can probably handle three or four during the course of the day and um and yeah and it's just it's got the stimulatory effect through it is dopaminergic as well it has a dopaminergic mm -hmm. effect and it has that um a release of um, it's it ha has a release of adrenaline um while having coffee as well so that's that feeling of you know you get that feeling of agitation like you need to do something you can get a bit jittery that might be the reason why along with uh, the dopamine uh, effect and then you've also got um that kind of like focused attention mm. 
that can that can come with 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 having some coffee. Um, but again, like it's going to depend on like you know how much of it has that kind of effect is going to depend on how adapted you are to it. Yes. And and also that, uh, but that's how it works. Actually, it's like it doesn't actually keep you awake. It blunts the um, uptake of adenosine by the receptors, yeah. as you mentioned, that chemical. So that thing that makes you one of the chemicals that makes you feel drowsy, it doesn't take effect because the receptors are getting blocked from uptaking it, and so you feel like you're more awake. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, because yeah because those receptors are getting blocked but interestingly because they're getting blocked you end up um you end up creating like a what's it like an overcompensation for it so when you do actually like so it ends up being like more receptors to try and receive this adenosine because it's like where mm. like you know where's it gone so you end up um creating an overcompensation and so when you do actually start to feel sleepy you feel drowsier than you not otherwise normally would. So you're like, whoa, crap, I'm just a lot more tired than uh, I yeah. otherwise would be. So yeah, you just you crash a little bit more. And um, and then combine, and if you're gonna have that late at night, like you know you did, mm. and um, so it blunts that drowsy feeling. So you're like, okay, I can't really, I don't really feel like going to sleep, even though I should. And then there's also that stimulatory effect. So then you're kind of a bit more wired awake. Even if you do end up falling asleep, it knocks out your uh, capacity to get deep sleep by as much as 20 percent yeah I that's felt a it. huge yeah, yeah that's a huge amount so even though you are asleep throughout the night your deep sleep is negatively impacted and mm. um that's the equivalent of like shaving years off your life basically because the how how important deep sleep is for our brain and body to recover and recuperate so yeah it's like you got to find out you got to know what level you're adapted to caffeine yeah. for. I think I think a lot of people think they're more adapted to it than they actually are, as well. Everybody's like, "Oh yeah, I can handle that. It's fine." It's like, mm, mm, probably not, not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure. Um, this is anecdotal, like you know, with people. I mean, I remember <laughs> I used to train a client. I used to have eight cups of coffee a day. Um, wow. And was yeah, was like super stressed out all the time because it was like you know a barrister who worked like a hundred hours, one hundred twenty hours a week. You know, something Amazing. stupid. And um, for whatever reason, so I, like you know, this is in like my early days where I was just like a bit like, uh, here's a hammer, everything is a nail, and I was like, you need to, stop. You need to, you need to stop, like just cut it out. And uh, there, but there was no need that person. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I get it. I know, I know that, right? Yeah. And um, but it just came to him at one point. He was like, I'm just gonna you know cut out a cup of coffee. I don't know what it was. Just something just came over him, and he did. Yeah. And for like he goes for a week, he had horrendous headaches. Oh, I can like imagine I would. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like close enough to to uh, like being a migraine. And then and then he was fine. So he operated better without all that coffee than he did with. So, you know, yeah. how many think that caffeine adapted or well, actually is like you're, you're not, you're just um you're 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 quite impaired in your ability to uh, function. And um so yeah, so I'd like, you know, encourage people to kind of figure out how adapted they actually are so yeah that you i can, think it is personal as so well you, you know out. yeah <sighs> definitely yeah. And, and and you know it, it is trial and error and sometimes i think doing that even though it was stupid it was useful because it just gave me that reminder that yeah your cutoff is definitely early afternoon don't yeah. have it after that you know and i might sound like an old person but actually sleep is way more important to me than having yeah. a cup of coffee. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, I know, and I've, I remember I've heard people going, well, yeah, I can have a cup of coffee after a meal at a restaurant and go straight to sleep. And it's like, it's probably a combination of the heavy food and the alcohol that override your capacity for that caffeine to <laughs> d have an effect. And that's why you can go straight to sleep. Um, mm. But, you know, if you want a coffee after a meal, that's, that's, that's absolutely fine. You know, that's your weekend, no problem. But for me, it was just a really useful reminder that my limit is this and don't go beyond it. It's like, I think I can have about three cups of coffee a day before I just feel it. I get jittery, anxious. I can't breathe. I can't sleep. Mm. It's just, it's not worth it. So, yeah. So, yeah. When you say you can't breathe, is it just like shallow breaths? Yeah, I've, I, it's something that I've noticed that if I have too much coffee, I start chest breathing. And my capacity to die for diaphragmatic breathe, it just can't, I can't do it. 
Um, mm. And I don't know why. It's like everything, it almost like it just tightens everything up around my my centre. And I get a bit, maybe it just makes me a bit more anxious. I don't know. Mm. I don't know what it is, but it's almost like I have to physically and mentally tell myself to breathe into my diaphragm. And then, mm. yeah. I, I, and, and there are things that can offset those caffeine jitters. I think one of the magnesium uh, supplements that I take, uh, yeah. I can't L- remember which L-theanine. one it is. Yeah. L theanine has that calming effect. Yeah. Um, so that can mm. definitely help level out the jitters. But I think for me, it's just knowing my caffeine limit and not taking it too late in the day. And everyone's going to be different mm. for sure. Well, I wonder if men are slightly different to women because you are naturally Probably. bigger, you know? the capacity to take more of that may be slightly different to us yeah probably yeah there's a lot of <laughs> biological differences between us um yeah in the sense of like you know what can we yeah what can we handle i think yeah there's a there's a lot of stuff in that realm mm. like comparatively that i don't think we we know enough about because there's like yeah, most research has ever been done is done on males Men. basically i know I read so, that the yeah. other day. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. It's, um, it's just, uh, yeah, just women get excluded because of, like, you know, if you go on your period or if you start yeah. to have a Our baby systems. in the middle of a yeah. study. Yeah. Yeah, they're just like, okay, well, that's just going to change results. So we need something Useful. to be a bit more steady. And, um, yeah, so it's pretty nuts that um, all the research that we have is, like, you know, advising people is forgetting that it's mostly aimed at, uh, mostly done on males. So, 70 kilogram males, yeah. Yeah, and we're giving, <laughs> giving advice, the, like blanket advice, where it's like, nah, we, we need to like tailor it a bit and like, you know, you have to 100%. understand that yeah, people's physiology is different. Mm. But it's all kind of like, yeah, learn that stuff, understand it, and then apply it accordingly is, yeah. uh, and appropriately is, is the key thing. Yeah, definitely. There's so much that we don't know, but it's, at the same time, like when I read that, it was like, I didn't know that. That's super useful to know um, because that kind of biases your opinion on certain things. But actually, we, we do. We need to tailor it to the sex, the person, the weight, the height, the, the background, the environment, the genetics. I had a really good turn the other day um, from a nutritionist, and I'm going to try and say it right, but um, it's our genetics that load the gun, but it's our environment that pulls the trigger. And I thought that was a really cool. Have you heard that before? Yeah. You've heard that? Ah, oh, I thought it was brilliant. I was like, damn, yeah, that's so true. Um, mm-hmm. So I think that kind of works within what we're talking about as well. Yeah, yeah, fully. Yeah, it's true. It's, um, yeah, that's uh, the genetics environment stuff as well. I told you about mm. a book that I read. Which, yes, uh, I know. I tried. I tried yeah. to read that book. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, I remember. But yeah, I, I've got beef with it. But uh, I won't go into mm-hmm. it. But it's no. um, but it's essentially is like yeah, genetics matter, but um, your environment matters as well. So yeah. set it up Nature in a way nurture. that yeah, yeah, exactly. So set it up in a way that um, allows you to excel um, in the way that you want to. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Okay, nice one, Drew Banger. Cool. Leave it there. GB, wicked. Awesome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening, for tuning in, and uh, just giving us your time. I hope uh, you got a lot of value out of the discussion. And if you did, please feel free to share the conversation with your friends and family, so more people can benefit from it, and it helps us get us out there. And um, we, yeah, we really appreciate that level of support. Uh, so go on Apple Podcasts uh, to leave us a rating review if you like. Uh, on um, YouTube, just subscribe to the channel, leave us a comment, a thumbs up, and tell us what you think of the episode. And um, find us and subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast player, whether that's Apple Podcasts, Apple, uh, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, um, or all the other ones out there like Pocket Cast, Podcast Addict, you name it, we're there. Sign up right there and get regular updates. And uh, we also have a newsletter now as well. So we send out emails weekly, um, at least once a week, uh, to remind you to listen to the podcast and what's going to be included in this week's episode. And um, so uh, we'll leave some links in the show notes for you to sign up to that if you choose to. And... um, 
Yeah, we'll leave it there. So thanks again for tuning in and we'll catch you next time.